Great, thank you. Good afternoon. The Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Members and presenters, please remember to mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Thank you. At this time, uh, will our secretary please proceed to call the roll? Senator Brooks? Here. Senator Goykachia? Here. Senator Hansen? Here. Senator Scheibel? Here. Chair Donate? And I am here for the record. Uh, thank you so much. And let the record reflect that we have reached quorum. Welcome everyone to the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. Before we begin, uh, just as always, I would like to explain how the virtual committee meetings will work since this is a new process for a lot of us um, during this session. As you may know, the legislative building is currently closed to the public, so all of our committee meetings will be held virtually. This means that committee members, staff, and everyone else will have to participate either through Zoom, video conference, or by telephone. However, there are various ways that members of the public can engage with us and participate throughout this entire process. As in, in previous sessions, all committee related material can be found and available through the Nevada Electronic Legislative Information System, commonly referred to as NELIS, which is accessible through the legislature's website. There are four ways that you can engage with our committee. First one being registering to participate in a committee meeting through the, through the NELIS system which places you in line to testify on a bill or provide public comment during our meeting. You can also submit written testimony to the committee's email address listed on the agenda. You can share your opinion via the legislature's opinion application on Nellis, and you could also view committee meetings online through Nellis or on the legislature's YouTube channel. To testify on a bill or provide public comment during the 2021 legislative session, members of the public must first register for the meeting you would like to participate in. Committee meetings are listed in several places on Nellis, and to, simply, to register, all you have to do is simply click on the participate button near the meeting date and time, and then just fill out the required information. Just as a note for you all today, while the meeting registration is required to participate, it does not guarantee you a time to speak, and similar to previous sessions, testimony and public comment may be limited due to time constraints. When you are on the phone line today, please pay attention to which bill is being considered and when the bills are on the listed on the meeting's agenda and follow the verbal prompts that will be provided by broadcast and production services. Today, we'll be hearing Senate bills 34 and 54, which are on the agenda. BPS staff will call on you to speak and they will call you by your last three digits of your phone number. Detailed instructions on participating in committee meetings are also available on the Nellis help page. And if you ever need any assistance with any of these processes, or if you'd simply like to have an electronic notification of the committee's agendas and minutes, always feel free to please contact our committee manager at the committee email listed on the agenda. So with that, uh, we are ready to go ahead and proceed with Senate Bill 34. I, at this time, I will now open the hearing on SB 34. This measure makes various changes relating to agriculture. Will the bill presenter, Mr. Douglas Ferris, administrator of the Division of Animal Industry, State Department of Agriculture, please proceed when you are ready. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Doug Ferris. I'm the Animal Industry Division Administrator for the Nevada Department of Agriculture. And it is my pleasure to appear before you today to present you uh, Senate Bill 34, which updates the titles and Nevada police officers and standards and training qualifications for the department's law enforcement staff, as well as the addition of, the, of adding the word visual when pertaining to brand inspections. Um, to provide some background, Nevada Department of Agriculture currently has five sworn law enforcement staff positions utilized in educating the public and the industry, as well as upholding um, as well as upholding and enforcing agricultural laws across the state. The current titles of these positions are agricultural enforcement officers. The intent of this proposed revisions in Senate Bill uh, 34 is to provide clarity and update the titles to reflect a title that is more consistent with the job duties and a nationally recognizable title of law enforcement personnel. NDA law enforcement staff are also currently required to hold a minimum of a Category 2 post certificate. SB 34 would update these requirements to a Category 1 Nevada post certificate and thus will create uh, equity amongst NDA law enforcement staff with other state, county, and law enforcement, um, law enforcement officers 
such as game wardens, state troopers, deputy sheriffs, and city police officers. All current NDA law enforcement staff already hold a category one Nevada Post certificate. So this bill would not negatively affect any of our staff, but would provide future benefits to the department, providing a larger group of interested candidates when filling vacant positions. Senate Bill 34 would also ensure that NDA law enforcement officers are included under the same occupational disease coverages that are provided to police officers across the state. Additionally, SB 34 seeks to clean up language pertaining to title changes of agricultural police officers in sections of NRS, as well as clean up language pertaining to inspections of brands by adding the word visual to the medium brand inspection. This bill does not create any new positions to the department or require any additional funding requests. Moving on to the bill, sections one and two replaces the titles listed to reflect that the director may appoint agricultural police officers in lieu of the previous terminology of field agents and inspectors to enforce laws. Section three provides that the definition of an agriculture, uh, provides a definition of an agricultural police officer. Section three, four, five, and six clarifies that brand inspections must be completed visually. This is to ensure that brand inspections are only performed when a visual inspection is performed by an inspector. Sections 7, 8, 9, 10, and 15 make changes to the terminology to, retect, to reflect the title change to an agricultural police officer. Um, section 11 clarifies that the director may appoint agricultural police officers and defines an agricultural police officer. This section also references the authorities and laws enforced by agricultural police officers and also stipulates that an agricultural police officer must be certified as a category one peace officer through Nevada Post. Sections 12, 13, and 14 removes agricultural police officers from being in the category two peace officer section. And this removal then categorizes um, the agricultural police officers uh, under the category one peace officer section. Section 16 adds agricultural police officers to be included under the same occupational disease coverages that are provided to police officers across the state. And with that chairman, that concludes my presentation of SB 34. Thank you, sir, for that presentation. At this time, do any of my committee members have any questions? Senator Bocchia, go for it. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm just curious, Mr. Ferris, now, even though these will become ag enforcement officers, uh, will they still have, will they still be performing brand inspections? For the record, Doug Ferris, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to Senator Bocchia, um, they would have the ability to perform brand inspections, but that would not be um, a normal part of their duties or, or a normal duty on a daily basis. It would be a more in, in a needed basis. Um, and that way they could attend to their, their law enforcement duties more. Thank you. And I was also, you know, wanting to make sure they would have the skills and ability as well. It's not that easy to, it's easy to say brand inspector, but we all know that's uh, you get into a crowd full of ball and cows at uh, 10 below zero, it's not easy. So just wanted to make sure they also would have the expertise. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Gokichia. Uh, Senator Brooks, do you have a question? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Donate. Uh, uh, Mr. Ferris, I'm, I'm looking at section 16 and that's the section that would uh, make the um, uh, basically the heart and lung um, provisions that are in that, uh, for, for a lot of different types of law enforcement um, eligible to uh, these positions. And you know we've heard a lot about what um, constitutes risks that create the need for the heart and lung coverage. Um, could, could you go into a little bit of detail about the activities that your officers would be performing that 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 lead you to believe that, that 16 should cover their activities as well? For the record, Doug Ferris, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to 
Senator Brooks, uh, Senator, so our, our officers are um, travel the roads primarily throughout the day in the course of their duties from one location to another. So um, as far as even with um, assisting state troopers on a normal basis, they assist the local um, sheriff's departments, police departments when, when requested. And so they are, during the normal course of their duties, they are putting themselves in those same positions or working alongside um, say state troopers. Uh, uh, Chair, can I follow up a little bit? Go for it. And Mr. Ferris, I just don't think I, I fully understand your day-to-day -day responsibilities of your officers and 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 uh, besides, you know, assisting other other law enforcement. If do you think you could briefly just walk me through, I, I apologize, kind of just what the, what the roles and responsibilities of your officers are. For the record, Doug Ferris, absolutely, and I apologize, Senator, for not being clear enough. Um, all, all of our all of our enforcement officers work much in the same way as a state trooper does, as far as being assigned a patrol vehicle that they keep at their residence. They respond from their residence for calls for service or emergencies, or in the normal course of their duties, um, unless they have an active investigation that they're working on or something of that sort. They will be out patrolling the roadways. They stop um, any private motor vehicle or commercial motor vehicle that they believe may be hauling agricultural products. Um, that could be with, whether it's hauling, whether they're hauling plants to, to a Walmart or uh, cattle to a livestock auction, they're stopping those or ranchers moving livestock from one place to another. So they are performing the, uh, the, those uh, traffic stops throughout the day and working with them. And then, like I said, in, in doing so, then also involve themselves with working with the other other law enforcement staff across the state. I don't know, did that clarify it more, Senator? It, it sure did, I appreciate that. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Uh, Vice, Chair, Vice Chair Scheibel, go for it. Thank you, Chair Donate. I have a, a couple of questions. Um, is the idea here to expand the role of agricultural police officers and have them start taking on additional responsibilities? For the record, Doug Ferris. Um, so I would say it's not to expand on it. Our, our officers already do a lot more than um, just the agricultural side. I believe one of the big factors behind this and why we want to push this forward is, is the issues we have in hiring law enforcement staff um, because they don't fall under the same qualifications that say a state trooper or a sheriff's deputy would. We have interest from other agencies of people who have an agricultural background would be interested in working for the Department of Agriculture in these positions, but the, the benefits as far as the heart and lung do not fall on there and also um, qualifying as a, as a category one police officer. So our intention is just to make the positions equitable to other police officers throughout the state and, and aid us then in, in continuing to fill our workforce. Okay. Um, do they currently investigate felony crimes? For the record, Doug Ferris, yes, that is correct. They will, depending on the, the different uh, agricultural crimes that are out there, there are felonies. And do they currently execute search warrants and arrest warrants? Doug Ferris, for the record, uh, they currently have the ability to. And um, I would say just uh, two weeks ago, we were we were actually uh, drafting a search warrant for a facility in Elko County. So they do have that ability and they do perform those actions when needed. OK, um, do they write speeding tickets? Doug Ferris, for the record, uh, on a normal basis, they would not write, it, write a speeding citation to somebody. They do have, because they have the same training as other the other law enforcement officers across the state, they do have that ability to, when there's a crime committed in their presence. Um, we do have uh, one of our officers that's located in Las Vegas has actually made two DUI arrests just in the course of his duties by stopping a reckless vehicle that was in front of him on the freeway and then because he has those police powers, he went ahead and performed that, that arrest. 
Okay. I guess my, my question is kind of similar to, to my colleagues. I'm just struggling to understand why agricultural officers should be considered category one peace officers, while probation officers, juvenile probation officers, bailiffs, um, other peace officers who put themselves in harm's way every day they go to work are still considered category two and three peace officers. Could, can you speak to that? For the record, I, I guess I can't answer why those other positions aren't considered category one. I just feel that with the job duties that, that our officers are performing up and down the highways of stopping vehicles and working out there right alongside with, with the other law enforcement officers, that that would put them into that same classification. Um, and, and I would also say that part of, part of the interest in this with the department is so that we can fill our positions with qualified candidates. Um, we, we had a position in Elko County that, that actually took us over two years to fill. And I was contacted by, by state troopers that I know that were interested, wanted to come to work for the department, but then refused to because of the benefits package and because it was basically taking a step down to come to the Department of Agriculture. And I, I understand that, I, I appreciate it. What I'm just not understanding is how it can be that we are going to be improving their benefits package by passing this bill, yet it has no fiscal note. And obviously we're a policy committee, not the money committee, but can you explain how it's possible to increase the benefits for the employee without increasing the cost to the employer? For the record, Doug Ferris, um, I believe the reason I know from, from our standpoint, from the department, there wasn't a fiscal note because it didn't um, meet the threshold for that. There would be an increased cost to the department for having our officers do the, um, to have the physicals uh, once a year, just like other law enforcement officers. So there would be that cost, but I don't believe it met, met the threshold and that's why it wasn't included. But I, I can check into that further for you also, if you'd like, Senator. Yeah, I, I would appreciate that because even if it doesn't meet the threshold, I'm concerned that we have a fiscal note in front of us with a zero on it, which would indicate that there's no cost, not just a cost that doesn't meet the threshold of, of reporting. Um, so I would appreciate some detail. Thank you. Uh, before we proceed to any other questions, Mr. Amber, would you like to clarify anything? Yes, Chair Dinante. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alan Ambern, for the record, I just wanted to touch on a couple of points there. Um, it seems that the issue is dealing with Section 16 of the bill, which is essentially categorizing these individuals as police officers. And it's through which Section 16 that these additional benefits would then apply to um, these agricultural police officers. Specifically, um, there are five areas and four topics where these protections would be expanded. So for example, as a result of being classified under section 16 of this bill, these agricultural police officers are exempt from the services of a grand or trial juror. They um, get compensation uh, if they are disabled. They're eligible for certain programs of group insurance, other medical hospital services. Um, they're eligible for certain types of industrial insurance. And so with several of those, those are not necessarily like immediate costs that the department itself might, might have imposed upon it, but these are costs that could be imposed later on, um, particularly with the uh, disability insurance. With all the other ones are more of benefits that, are, that would now apply to these individuals, not necessarily cost, but like you have an additional insurance option if you wanna take it under that industrial insurance statute. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, are there any other questions at this time? Sir Donati. Uh, go, go to you, Senator go, go to you, go for it. Yes, and thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and all these questions have piqued my interest. Uh, now, Mr. Ferris, will these officers still be responding to, say, uh, the car uh, horse uh, collisions we have out here on 50, uh, your truck wrecks? Uh, you know, we all know in the past, these are the people that got in these trucks and uh, dug those cows up. But I'm a little nervous that uh, we're going to hand this off now. For the record, um, 
Doug Ferris, Senator Goykachi, that is correct. These these officers will still still perform those duties. They'll respond to the vehicle crashes, um, whether they're involving livestock or not, and then livestock uh, vehicle crashes in, in which you're discussing, yes, they'll, they still will be responding to those and that is, is one of their duties. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if how many of you were here a couple sessions ago when we were trying to bring them forward in the pictures I had of uh, some of them truck wrecks are pretty catastrophic when you're trying to get the live ones out and separate it from the dead ones. I want to make sure, I don't care what uniform they got on there, but somebody's going to have to get in there and get dirty. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Senator Gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Senator Hanson, do you have any questions? Or... You're good? Okay, thank you. Uh, so just, Mr. Ferris, um, one quick clarification. Could you please document for me why um, you are adding chapter 585 in section 11? Uh, was this like intentional or a mistake or I, I'm just interested in hearing your feedback on that. For the record, Doug Ferris. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm looking at it right now just to clarify. You were looking at section, I apologize. What, what section were you looking for, Mr. Chairman? Uh, chap so adding chapter 585 in section uh, 11, paragraph A, I For the record, Doug first, Senator, I would have to get back with you on that to, to see. I'm not seeing it right now in section 11. And so I, I wouldn't have a firm answer for you on that, but I can follow up with that if you'd like. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, I will definitely follow up with you on that. Um, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions at this moment in time? Seeing none. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, we are now ready to go ahead and move with uh, testimony. So next we will hear testimony in support of SB 34. As a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive testimony in writing. EPS, is there anyone on the line that would wish to support, uh, provide support testimony? Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on Senate Bill 34, Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, two, four, five. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, two, four, five. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Chair Donate, members of the committee, this is Alyssa Nayworth. I'm so sorry, but I accidentally pressed star nine for the wrong bill. This is my first time, so give me, uh, I'm so sorry, and I'll be talking to you about the next bill. We are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 34. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in support at this time. 
Uh, thank you so much. Next, we will hear testimony in opposition. Uh, before recognizing callers, I would like to recognize that earlier today there was one opinion submitted on the public opinion poll for SB 34 from Kimberly Henderson in opposition, and I encourage people to use the public opinion poll to share their views as well. Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Senate Bill 34, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Thank you so much. And last but not least, is there anyone wishing to testify in neutral bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neut neutral on Senate Bill 34, please press star nine now to take your place in the Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Great, thank you so much. Um, I think we are good to go for right now. Uh, I know there are other questions that we will answer offline, um, but Mr. Ferris, thank you for your presentation and for your time today, sir. Um, so at this time, I will now go ahead and close the hearing on SB 34. Thank you. Okay, so now that we have gotten that out of the way, we can go ahead and discuss uh, Senate Bill 54. So I will now go ahead and open the hearing on SB 54. This measure revises provisions relating to the State Board of Agriculture. Will the bill presenter, Ms. Jennifer Ott, Director uh, of the State Department of Agriculture, please proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Chairman Donate and members of the committee. It is good to see you again. Uh, my name is Jennifer Ott. I'm the director of the Department of Agriculture. Thank you for allowing me to appear in front of you today to present Senate Bill 54, which revises NRS 561.055, outlining the membership of the Board of Agriculture. To provide background, soon after appointment by the governor, I provided an overview of department operations and the Board of Agriculture to his staff. It was immediately clear that the composition of the board did not align to the industries in Nevada that it is charged with representing, nor the current responsibilities of the department for whom it sets policy. The department is responsible for many aspects of the food supply chain, from planting and livestock production to food distribution. However, the composition of the board is heavily on production. The department is requesting to replace two board positions with a member experienced in supplemental nutrition distribution and a member experienced in food manufacturing or processing. The goal of these changes is to more closely align board positions to the industries currently within the department's jurisdiction. To put it simply, we want everyone to have a voice on the important policy discussions of the board. Supplemental nutrition is defined as the food provided to a person or family, augmenting any food they might have to create a full and nutritious meal. The department works with many federal programs to distribute supplemental nutrition to food insecure populations. 92% of the overall budget for the department in fiscal year 21 was the responsibility of the food and nutrition division within the department who has no board representation. This proposal would give the industry one of those 11 current seats. Food manufacturing and processing also has no board representation, and yet the economic impact for the food and beverage manufacturing sector counts for 83% of the agriculture industry in Nevada. Much of that is manufacturing or processing of agricultural products sourced from outside of the state. Currently, the board is not required to have any member with manufacturing and processing experience, despite the growth and importance of this sector on Nevada's agricultural economy which is why this position is important. We do not have a connection between the production of plants, produce, and livestock and the processing and manufacturing of the same. This proposal would give the food and manufacturing industry one of the 11 current seats. From comments made by the public in previous meetings and some you might hear today, I understand that those on the production side of the industry see this bill as a reduction of importance 
or even a disrespect to the, the history of the industry. And I disagree. By recognizing and receiving input from those at the end of the supply chain, we strengthen both the historically important and emerging industries. By creating connections and bringing to light opportunities, we ensure our agriculture industry develops in ways that benefit all Nevadans. By giving a voice to food insecure populations and those working toward investing in Nevada's food supply chain infrastructure, we enrich board discussions and increase the knowledge and diversity of board conversations. These changes are important now more than ever that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to light the vulnerabilities of the American food supply chain. The bill seeks to promote diversity and provide a voice to those at the end of the supply chain, those that process and manufacture from agriculture goods and those that represent the food insecure populations that receive agricultural goods in the form of food. The bill also ensures the current industries continue to be represented on the board so they can continue to speak on important issues. Chairman, at this time, I would like to pull up a single slide that will help clarify the changes in this bill. The bulk of the changes are in section one. And I have prepared a slide here to make it a little bit easier to walk you through. At the top of this slide, I've just made some quick points. These are not all of the points for the Board of Agriculture, just some relevant ones that I've mentioned in the history. The Board of Agriculture has the positions appointed by the governor. They establish the policy of the department and not more than two board members may be residents of the same county. If you can see there's on the left-hand side, the list of how the current board makeup is. And on the right-hand side is our proposal. The, uh, the black font here at the bottom are uh, members that do not have any changes. It's the blue areas that I'm going to focus on. So currently there are six positions we are interested in uh, changing. There are three members engaged in range or semi-range cattle production, one member engaged in range or semi-range sheep production, one member engaged in growing row crop space to permit mechanical cultivation, and one member engaged in general farming. Our proposal is to adjust that to two members engaged in livestock production, two members engaged in growing crops, at least one of which is a specialty crop harvested by mechanical cultivation, one in the field of supplemental nutrition distribution, and one engaged in food manufacturing or animal processing. The section two of the bill explains that current board members will serve out their term and that the two new positions will be appointed on July 1st, 2022. Section three of the bill explains the effective date of July 1st, 2022. And Chairman, that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much, Ms. Ott. Uh, at this time, are there any questions from any of my committee members? And uh, just for clarification, clarification before um, anyone raises any questions, uh, right now we are entertaining questions specifically for Ms. Ott. Um, we will have other presenters throughout this testimony. So right now, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, Senator Gokuchia. Thank and you. And then after that, Senator yes. Yes, uh, just a couple of quick uh, questions, Ms. Sop. Uh, I believe you were appointed by the board, were you not? Uh, Jennifer, out for the record, Chairman, if it's all right with you, I'm going to go direct to each of the members. Uh, Senator Kachia, this is Jennifer out for the record. Uh, I am selected by the board and uh, uh, appointed by the governor is how the statute reads. The statute reads, you must be appointed by the board with the of the governor. Okay. I just want to, and I know you, uh, some of the members here testifying today did actually were involved in that appointment. And, and I guess that just kind of concerns me, Ms. Ott, why you didn't bring this change to the board. And that's what's caused a lot of the problems that were in a lot of the testimony here today. If uh, they were your, your, your board, and uh, I don't believe you told them that you were bringing this bill forward. Uh, that was going to change the makeup of the board, did you? Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, I'm, I believe that was a question. I'd, I'd like to respond to Senator Gutkachia, if I may. Uh, yes, Jennifer Ott, for the record. Um, the BDR, again, is uh, as an executive branch agency, the Department of Agriculture works on, under the governor's BDRs. And this is a BDR that was brought forth under that purview. Uh, the governor appoints the board of members, and so that's what we were working with. Um, the uh, board members did know. Uh, I contacted every single one of the board members uh, prior to the pre-filed deadline. Uh, also, this board change was on the agenda at the December 9th board meeting. And then because of discussion on that December 9th board meeting, the uh, board chairman chose to call a special meeting uh, to discuss an amendment that I believe you'll hear later on today. And so uh, I've done the best that I could to reach out to them uh, and, and, and let them know of that process and what was happening. Thank you, Ms. Ott, and I appreciate that. It's just unfortunate we've got this confusion over it. Uh, it. It probably would have been better if uh, if we'd all been up front with it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Gokichia. Uh Senator Brooks. Thank you, Chair Donate. I just, uh, Ms. Ott, just a question about the, the the existing makeup of the, the board. Um, you know how, how far that goes back? Uh, Senator Brooks, Jennifer, uh, for the record, uh, I believe, uh, you know what, I, I can check very quickly for you. I don't want to guess on the record, um, but I'm going to guess probably 40 or 50 years, but I can double check. Thank you. I, I'm just imagining the last time it was updated or even when it was updated, it probably reflected uh, the the what was going on in Nevada probably, you know, a lot more accurately at the time. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, this is Senator Goykachia. I believe it was updated in 01. Uh, that was the last time when we took the sheep commission off and uh, gave the, the sheep industry a seat on the board. Thank you for that, Senator Gorkichu, for that clarification. Uh, Ms. Ott, did you have something to say? I, I, I apologize, Chairman. I just looked it online. The uh, chapter of the NRS that was added uh, to for the board uh, was adopted in 1961. And there has been changes. My apologies, Jennifer, for the record. There has been changes um, uh, since, but not to the basic makeup. Great, thank you for that clarification. Uh, Vice Chair Scheibel, go for it. Thank you, uh, Chair Donate. I was just trying to cross-reference SB 54 with SB 65 that we heard last week and um, noticing specifically that on page two, where, where you're adding a member to the board, who works in the field of supplemental nutrition distribution. Is that a program that already exists within the Department of Agriculture or is that one that is being created in SB 65 or being renamed in SB 65? Uh, thank you, Senator Scheibel, Jennifer Ott, for the record. Uh, this is not a, so supplemental nutrition, Currently at the Department of Agriculture, we have the Food and Nutrition Division. The Food and Nutrition Division is responsible for the distribution of uh, funds to food banks, community organizations. We run a variety of different programs. That currently exists. Uh, what we were doing in SB 65 is, uh, like I said, you know, tightening up that statute so that is more easily available and understandable by the public and making it more transparent. So what we are asking in this bill, SB 54, is to have board representation for that division that exists currently in the department excuse me, in the department, uh, like I said in my introduction, 92%, uh, at least in fiscal year 21, 92% uh, of the budget for the department was in the food and nutrition division. And so that's what why, why we're asking for the addition of this uh, board representation. Okay, thank you. That helped, that clarifies it for me. Okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. 
Uh, any other questions for Ms. Ott at this time? Okay, uh, Ms. Ott, could you please clarify for me? Um, have, has the board ever had, uh, or has your um, department ever had a consideration of adding anyone with a public health expert uh, or professional background in uh, as part of this revision? Was that was that ever something that came up, or was it kind of covered on under the supplemental nutrition member? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, we felt that the language of su supplemental nutrition distribution best fits the activities of the Food and Nutrition Division at the department, uh, basically assisting food banks and food pantries with providing food uh, administrative dollars, uh, working with tribal communities on uh, distributing food directly to them, uh, those activities. Uh, we do have nutrition specialists that work in our school lunch program uh, on staff. And so we phrased the language that way so that we could pull from potentially a variety of different uh, nutrition uh, industries and distribution areas. So th that's why we framed it that way uh, rather than narrowing it to uh, a health focus. Uh, but uh, for us, when we're uh, working with food distribution, we're always looking at nutrition and, and the health of the food insecure population that we serve. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, okay, I don't think anyone else has any questions, so we can go ahead and move forward. So just as clarification, a couple amendments have been submitted for SB 54 and they are all uploaded on Nellis on the exhibits side. Um, I would like the party submitting those amendments to address them when I ask um, again for testimony in opposition to SB 54. So at this time, we can go ahead and move forward. Um, now I would like to go ahead and take testimony in support of SB 54. As a reminder for everyone that's listening today, uh, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive, comprehensive testimony in writing. DPS, um, is there anyone wishing, is there anyone on the line that is wishing to provide support testimony at this time. Thank you so much, Chair. To testify in support on Senate Bill 54, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in support at this time. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, uh, seeing that there has been no support for uh, testimony, just um, for anyone that's watching, if we are going a little bit too fast, um, you are always welcome to communicate your support or intentions to my committee members and we will be able to reflect that accurately. Um, so at this time, we will go ahead and continue to hear testimony in opposition. And with that, I would like to start with Mr. Doug Busselman, Executive Vice President for the Nevada Farm Bureau Federation. So whenever you are ready, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we appreciate the time to uh, give our presentation. For the record, I'm Doug Busselman. I'm the Executive Vice President of Nevada Farm Bureau. We are speaking today in opposition to SB 54 as it was introduced. We don't agree with the Nevada Department of Agriculture's proposal to reduce representation from Nevada's cattle and sheep industries on the Nevada Board of Agriculture. We want to point out that cattle production is the largest sector in Nevada's agriculture community and that various programs and regulatory actions in the Nevada Department of Agriculture's livestock division are primarily paid by producers. The representation of those who are connected to the producers are paying the bills for the regulations and services provided to the cattle uh, sector. Excuse me. <clears throat> Removing the designated sheep producer is also troubling given that sheep producers were named a seat on the board when the Department of Ag dissolved and took over the role of the Sheep Commission. We view the role and responsibility of the Board of Agriculture in the context of NRS 561.105 offering oversight and direction to the Nevada Department of Agriculture, especially for those areas of regulation 
and policies direction by the to the department services involving regulations. Due to the nature of the Board of Agriculture, we are unclear of the connection related to the department services for the uh, supplemental nutrition distribution. The Ag Board has no regulatory or policy connection to this program that we are aware of. We're also unclear as to who might be eligible to serve in this role based on the manner in which this description is explained. The second board of uh, position uh, that the, the department is pressing for does have that type of connection and relationship. Um, and we can understand that position being uh, added. Uh, Nevada Farm Bureau would be able to support SB 54 with the amendment that you'll be hearing shortly from the Board of Agriculture with their proposal for makeup of maintaining the current qualifications for the board and adding two additional seats. Our amendment, Nevada Farm Bureau is seeking, would change NRS 561.105, given that this uh, bill opens up that chapter. It relates to the duties and regulations for the Nevada Board of Agriculture. In line with the language that we've offered, this amendment would enhance the understanding that all and I wanna emphasize that's really the key. All regulations that are necessary for the operation for the department would be carried out uh, through by bringing forward those regulation proposals to the Board of Agriculture for consideration and potential adoption. Uh, I'm available for any questions that you might have. Uh, great, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with uh, the other members who are presenting their amendments to this bill. And then at the end, uh, I can entertain any questions for any, all three, any of all three of you. So, uh, Mr. Barley Higby, uh, Vice Chair of the State Board of Agriculture, uh, proceed when you are ready, sir. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, for the record, Varlin Higby, Mr. Chair, uh, I re represent at this time the Board of Agriculture as Vice Chair, uh, Woody, Worthington apologizes for not being able to be here today, so you're stuck listening to me. <laughs> um, this bill was proposed, and Jennifer, when it was mailed out to us, uh, there was some major concerns. I got calls from the sheep people and the individuals that are represented on this board, and, and their concern was enough that we decided, Woody and I decided that we would call an emergency meeting and see if we couldn't solve some of these issues of which we did. And, and that brings us to our, the opposition of the bill as it is written. And we would like to make an amendment that would, the changes that would be made would, we would keep the sheep seat the way it is and add two more members to the board, making it uh, the 13 member board, which the two members been discussed uh, supplemental nutrition distribution and food manufacturing and, and, and animal processing. Um, with that, I'm open for questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Higby. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Pete Paris, member uh, of the State Board of Agriculture, you can also proceed, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you for hearing me. Uh, my name name is Pete Paris for the record. Uh, I'm uh, dear, dear Mr. Chairman and members of the State Natural Resource Committee. I am Pete Paris again, a third generation rancher in Nevada. I currently sit on the Board of Agriculture representing semi rain sheep production. While I'm here supporting my fellow Board of Agriculture members, all the opinions I provide today are mine. I have many concerns with SB 54 as written. First and foremost, I oppose the provision to lump cattle and sheep ranching representation under general livestock production. Second, along with that, I oppose removing the linkage to rangeland livestock production. I'm also concerned with the lack of engagement with the Board of Agriculture and agricultural groups when this bill was being considered and drafted. Lastly, I've grown increasingly concerned with what I perceive as efforts over many years to diminish the role relevancy and especially the authority of the Board of Agriculture. To my first point, combining and renaming the cattle and sheep production seat into two general seats representing just livestock production is a mistake. 
First, this goes against the intent of the previous legislation, SB 486 and NRS 562 in the 2003 legislature. There's a history that needs to be explained here. Initially, the Sheep Commission was its own identity to specifically support sheep producers in the state. The Sheep Commission was formed in 1907, eight years before the Board of Stock Commissioners, which later became the Department of Agriculture. The commission only disbanded in 2003 because sheep producers were offered a specific seat on the Board of Agriculture. This commitment needs to be upheld. Second, I have firsthand knowledge and experience that these two types of livestock productions have interests, needs, and policies that are often distinct and separate. This diversity of interest across and between cattle and sheep production must be protected on the board as it currently sits. Next, Nevada livestock production is one with rangeland ranching, both public and private rangelands. The primary agriculture output in Nevada are rangeland sheep and cattle production. Plus many of the natural resources issues facing Nevada are linked to what happens on Nevada rangeland. The board's rep representation should reflect this and retain livestock production qualifications representing range or semi-range productions. Finally, there is no need to adjust the board makeup for two seats representing supplemental nutrition distribution, food manufacturing, or animal processing. This appears to be a tactic to reduce the intention of supporting production agriculture and ultimately changing the focus of the board. Both of these new areas are federally mandated programs with all the rules and regulations to manage them. Knowledge and expertise already exist in the department itself and broadly on the board regarding the food manufacturing and distribution system. To be involved in agriculture today requires all of us to have special levels of knowledge of our overall food system. If it is the desire of the legislature to move forward with these new seats on the board, the common sense middle ground would be to add these new seats rather than recasting and reduction of current seats. Please simply retain the current seats on the Board of Agriculture or less preferred as it takes away the focus from livestock production and range and agriculture. Just expand the board rather than redefining the current board seats. Thank you for allowing me to provide this testimony on, on this important issue today. I'm available to take uh, the committee's questions if you have any. And again, thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, at this time, are there any questions from my committee members? Um, just for uh, your notice, if you can please identify the speaker that you're asking, that you're referring your question to, that would make it a little bit easier. Um, are there any questions for any of the three gentlemen that just spoke? Uh, I don't see anyone. So, uh, Mr. Busselman, this is just a question from uh, myself. Can you confirm for me the scope of the change that you are looking to, uh, that you are seeking? Are you looking for a small change or something that is more robust that applies to a broader range of statutes? Um, it'd be helpful to hear your intent behind this so that we can be a good, uh, so that we can know how to be of good assistance to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, for the record, my name is Doug Busselman um, with Nevada Farm Bureau. Yes, we are in intending, right now there are a number of different sections of Nevada statute that cover various programs and cover various uh, areas of operation. And each of those sections uh, have their own separate nuance as far as who is identified as being responsible. Um, I, I would draw attention to NRS 564.030 which covers the brand laws. And there it identifies that the director has the authority uh, and the responsibility to adopt such regulations not inconsistent there within and appoint such agents. In this particular case, the past couple of directors have um, taken that section of statute to read that they don't have to take anything to the Board of Agriculture in spite of even what the current language says, 
in 561.105. What we're attempting to do is to make it clear with an underlined emphasis that all regulations that fit under the operation of the Department of Agriculture are taken back to the Board of Agriculture for consideration and adoption. Thank you so much for uh, that clarification, sir. Uh, committee members, any last minute questions that we want to entertain before we move on to testimony? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so in addition to the proposed amendments, two letters have been received in opposition to the bill as introduced, and those are po posted on Nellis. Those letters are from Gary McQuinn, Executive Vice President for the Society for Range Management, and William Payne, Dean and Professor, College of Agriculture, Biotechnology, and Natural Resources from the University of Nevada, Reno. DPS, is there anyone on the line at this time wishing to provide testimony in opposition to SB 54? Thank you so much, Chair. To testify in opposition on Senate Bill 54, please press star nine now to take your in the Caller with the last three digits, 983. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Yes, uh, <clears throat> can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? This is Joe Guild, G-U-I-L-D. Very good. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, good afternoon and members of the uh, Senate Natural Resources Committee, good afternoon to all of you. Most of you know me. Uh, welcome, Mr. Chair, to the uh, legislature. Um, again, I'm Joe Guild. I'm the past president of the Nevada Cattlemen's Association. I'm a cattle producer in Douglas County and, and Elko County, Nevada. I'm the current treasurer of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, a 25,000 member uh, of the association representing the beef cattle industry in this country. In 2003, uh, uh, Mr. Paris is right, the quote range or semi range sheep production end quote member was added to the membership of the Board of Agriculture. This culminated uh, in a about a three year effort when it was found in about 1999 that the Sheep Commission was insolvent. And uh, I was in the room, uh, I think it was in the room that your uh, committee will meet later, I hope, in person, uh, when the deal was announced <coughs> to the predecessor of this committee uh, to exchange a sheep industry member on the Board of Agriculture for the sheep industry's support of the elimination of the Nevada Sheep Commission, which had been in existence since the early 1900s. <clears throat> I was reminded recently <clears throat> that in that in that deal, if this position ever went away from the Board of Agriculture, the Sheep Commission would be attempted to be brought back. And I don't think this is an outcome that I believe the sheep industry would support currently. I was at, I attended the meeting on January 19th, uh, 2021 uh, of the board and testified uh, the board, the board voted seven to two to not support SB 54 on that day. I supported, I supported in my testimony, this board action. As a national officer of the largest cattle industry association in the country, I also oppose the elimination of one of the members of the board actually engaged in range or semi range cattle production. I, I support the notion that the board as constituted currently should remain in that constitution and to the director's testimony. 
you know, if SB 54 passed and a two members who are actively engaged in livestock production were the current, would be the makeup of the board, uh, I want the committee to understand that that could be a, uh, a poultry grower, um, a, a dog or cat breeder, domesticated. All these are considered livestock under the statute. So to Pete Paris's point, livestock production <clears throat> uh, with sheep and cattle are completely different enterprises and have different issues. So I, I think uh, the, the board should remain as, as it's constituted. I take no position on the amendments that are being offered, but I just wanna see the current makeup of the commission, I mean, the board uh, representate, representation uh, of, of the livestock industry in the state. And I would add one other thing and quote NRS 561.015 to the committee, subsection two. The purpose of this chapter, the chapter related to uh, the Department of Agriculture is to promote the efficient, orderly and economical conduct of the various activities for the encouragement, advancement and protection of the livestock and agricultural industries of the state of Nevada. And that's the statute that uh, the director referred to. It was passed in 1961. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I really appreciate the opportunity to testify in front of this committee. As some of the older committee members know, I've been doing this for a long time, representing the livestock industry in the state, among others. So uh, I do have a history here that maybe can give you some perspective. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the opportunity. Caller with the last three digits, 888. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm Peter Kruger, Kruger, K-R-U-E-G-E-R, -E -E the state executive of the Nevada Petroleum Marketers Association. And for those committee members who wonder why a petroleum member would uh, want to weigh in on uh, Senate Bill 54, the reason is that uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, has a large, large responsibility for the quality, testing, uh, sampling of petroleum products throughout the state. Uh, it currently resides in the uh, Division of uh, Consumer Equitability. We hope soon to be the uh, Division of, uh, once again, the Division of Weights and Measures. Um, I'm, I'm on the, uh, I'm here in opposition to uh, SB 54 as written. Um, we do support the two amendments, the one board, uh, the one offered by uh, the uh, members of the uh, current Board of Agriculture uh, to create two new seats rather than um, dismantle and disenfranchise two important seats, uh, two important uh, roles and, and seats uh, in the current industry. We also support uh, Mr. Busselman's uh, amendment regarding uh, regulations being, uh, or the requirement that regu before regulations are, uh, and, and bill drafts and things of that nature are uh, forwarded, uh, that uh, process uh, rightfully belongs uh, in the policy, before the policy making um, role of the Board of Agriculture. And the reason we feel strongly currently in uh, regulation in the Department of Agriculture, petroleum regulations that are adopted by reference, these are normally uh, federal regulations, but they can be state. Any, any regulation adopted by, uh, by reference um, is, has a, call it a 60-day cooling off period uh, that 
gives the Board of Agriculture the opportunity to review that um, regulation or that uh, policy before it becomes effective. So we think that what Mr. Busselman is is uh, recommending and amend uh, seeking to amend uh, makes good sense uh, on behalf of uh, everybody involved with the Department of Agriculture. That concludes uh, my remarks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, before we continue on, uh, BPS, is there a way that we can uh, bring back uh, Mr. Joe Gill? Uh, I believe Senator Hansen had a question for him, if that's possible. Certainly. Uh... Mr. Chair, if, uh, if he's not available, I could just kind of throw it out there as a general point, though. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 983, the committee would like for you to unmute your microphone. Please press star six so you may begin. Excuse me, please press star six, correct. Chair, that caller had just dropped off of the call. I apologize. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Hanson, we can coordinate this offline if that's helpful, but you are more than welcome to share your questions at this time. Oh, I, I feel I've been involved in this sort of stuff a long time. Well, thanks, Mr. Chair. My, a couple of questions, actually. I'm sure somebody out there, uh, Doug Bosselman or whoever, at the beginning of the presentation, Director Ott, uh, I think she said that the current expenditures of the Department of Ag or something like 90% involved with the, these new board positions. But then I heard another testimony saying that the cattle industry in Nevada is like a quarter of a billion dollars in total sales or something. I'm just kind of wondering, as I look at the makeup of this board, uh, if, if in fact the Department of Ag is spending 90% of its budget on these sorts of, of issues, then it does seem reasonable that we we create a position uh, reflecting that on the board. Um, so I'm kind of want, trying to figure out where the numbers are coming from and what, what's accurate. If in fact, ag's primary purpose is uh, ag and livestock is a portion of that, then it would make sense to at the very least leave the current board positions there and maybe add new ones. But then my question for Joe Guild actually was also, um, Anytime you're looking at boards like this, start getting increasing numbers on it. It becomes much more unwieldy. And you know, at 13 members, you're probably just starting to push the upper reasonable limit of that. So would there be some sort of a, a push to have like an executive committee made up of five or something like that? It would handle a lot of the issues. And then the big board meets only, only so often. Anyway, just a, a kind of a little bit of a, a background that I needed. If in fact the board, like I said, is doing ninety percent of its business involving these types of positions, then it seems completely reasonable for Director Ott to push this. Um, if in fact there's a much bigger picture here than what I understand, uh, I would like a little more understanding on, on the numbers. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm sure Mr. Guild's probably listening, and he'll get back in touch with me. But those are just some of the current concerns I'd like to have addressed down the road. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Okay, thank you. I'm glad that we have that uh, on the record and hopefully we get an answer to that. Um, BPS, can you please continue with uh, the testimony at this time? Certainly, thank you, Mr. Chair. As a reminder, we are currently in opposition testimony on Senate Bill 54. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 436. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello, this is Jake Tibbetts. It's J-A-K-E-T-I-B-B-I-T-T-S. 
and I'm the Natural Resources Manager for Eureka County. So, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, thanks for the opportunity to weigh in on SB 54. Um, I won't uh, belabor the point. I just want to get on record that Eureka County is opposed to the current language, very similar to the points you've already heard. Um, but again, uh, we do not uh, oppose the intent to add a voice to those um, at the end of the supply chain, as Dir Director Ott has mentioned. And so we would support both the amendments that from the Board of Ag themselves, as well as the Farm Bureau amendment, we, we would uh, support both of those measures as we think it does provide clarity and it's better to expand the board given the diversity of agriculture in the state. But one point we do want to focus on is the importance in Nevada where we are made up primarily of rangelands and public lands to retain that connection to range livestock production, because that is an important role in this state and many of the issues facing Nevada happen to have a close nexus and connection with public lands and our rangeland. So it's important to have that connection retained. And with that, again, we're opposed to the language, but we'd be happy to help move forward on the amendments. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 983. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Joe Gill, G-U-I-L-D. I apologize. I uh, <coughs> these these new technologic devices are a little bit uh, unfamiliar to me, but I was able to get back in. If there was a question of me, I'd be happy to try and answer it. Mr. Hansen, go ahead. All right, Senator Hansen, go ahead. Thanks, Chair. Do you hear me okay? I guess my my, my uh, speaker was a little muffled. Okay, now. Hi, Joe. I just wanted to say hi. Okay. First of all, and, uh, you've been watching government a long time. One concern I've got is if we expand the board to 13 members, the board becomes quite unwieldy. That was one concern. The second concern was uh, what Director Ott said at the beginning of the of the hearing. He mentioned that the actual budget and the allocations of the money, apparently about 90. That of it go go to the two positions, uh, the types of, of, uh, of services that the two new positions would would cover. I'm kind of uh, then you mentioned like, uh, livestock cattle grazing in particular is like 250 million dollar a year industry or something like that. I'm just kind of wondering where these bundles all fit in for representation on the board. Um, if in fact ag is spending 90 percent of its budget on these types of issues, then it seems reasonable that the board should have some sort of position that would reflect that. On the other hand, if that actually is a token amount of the actual production of agriculture in Nevada, then it would seem we could probably leave it alone as you suggested. I'm just wondering if you are, you're familiar with some of the numbers that she had, uh, she had mentioned early in the presentation. Uh, well, generally speaking, I am, uh, and I, I do, I am aware that uh, a significant, significant amount of money comes for the uh, nutrition programs uh, uh, in <clears throat> implementation, uh, comes from the federal government. And, you know, I have no quarrel, actually. I, I, I said I took no position, but uh, on the addition of a couple more people to the board, um, I, I frankly don't see the nexus myself. You know, the, the federal government has regulations and 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 for the implementation of these programs and the spending of its money and those rules and regulations uh, the board would have no uh, no authority over um, but they might have some in, you know they might have some input relative to those that beyond my expertise, Senator. So uh, if, if, if the committee wants to go this direction and increase the size, uh, I think that's fine. Uh, you know, I would echo what Jay Tibbetts just said, you know, range livestock production in the state is, is the, the big deal. There's, you know, there's some row crop production and in, in particularly in Mason Valley that you know, is significant in the tens of millions of dollars of, of gross income 
to this uh, <clears throat> to that industry. Um, but but livestock production is still the biggest part part of the of the state's uh, agricultural income. And uh, you know if it makes if it makes the director's job easier to have two board members related to these other positions, uh, I'm okay with it. I really am. I just don't want to see the dilution of, of the input and and the uh, of the livestock positions. And the way that bill reads, we could have a, a dog breeder and a, and a poultry producer as the livestock representatives on the board. And that doesn't make any sense to me. So I uh, hope that answers the question. Thanks again, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to to uh, testify, and uh, I can't wait until I can shake your hand and say hello uh, in person. <laughs> well, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for the second bite of the apple, and thank you, uh, Mr. Guild, for your your uh, always always very skilled and wise input. Much appreciated. Great, and thank you so much. Good to talk to you, yes. Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, CPS, is there anyone at this time that would like to, um, if we can please continue with testimony? Certainly, thank you, Chair. Caller with the last three digits, 046. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Martin Paris, M-A-R-T-I-N. P-A-R-I-S. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Again, my name is Martin Paris. I'm the executive director of the Nevada Cattlemen's Association. The Nevada Cattlemen's Association respectfully opposes SB 54 in its entirety. SB 54's attempt to restructure the makeup of the board would leave only two positions dedicated to what would now be livestock production Removing the distinction between sheep and cattle production would be a great disservice to both industries as they face different and unique challenges. Further, range livestock production is the largest sector of Nevada agriculture, and the current seats on the board are needed to adequately represent our diverse production practices. SB 54 appears to have been drafted and introduced without any input or consideration from the board or agricultural stakeholders that it will ultimately um, affect by the passage of the bill. Regarding the proposed amendment to simply add the two new positions, um, we believe that while the sectors being considered for addition are both immensely important, both, both are also currently well represented by the existing makeup of the board. Further, we also question the policy and regulatory connection between the board and the proposed positions as it relates to the board's ability to set policy or conduct oversight for at least one of these positions. Policy and regulations in both of these areas are largely mandated by the federal government, whereas the administration of livestock programs under the Department of Agriculture is fee-based and directly under the authority of the Department of Ag. For these reasons, we're opposed to the amendment brought forward by the board we strongly support the original motion approved at the State Board of Agriculture's January 19th, 2021 meeting in a seven to two vote, which withdraws support of SB 54 for legislative consideration entirely. However, we would strongly support and encourage standalone revisions to NRS 561.105 that have been brought forward through Nevada Farm Bureau's amendment to ensure that the State Board of Agriculture continues to maintain its function. Thank you for allowing me the time to provide this testimony. I appreciate it. Caller with the last three digits, two, four, five. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hi, Alyssa, A-L-I-S-A, Nave, N-A-V-E, hyphen, Worth, W-O-R-T-H. All right, Chair Donate and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Alyssa Nave Worth, 
from Greenberg Traurig here on behalf of the Nevada Veterinary Medical Association. We are speaking in opposition to the legislation as introduced. We appreciate the department's efforts on this bill. We have been in communication with Director Ott, and we appreciate her professionalism. The Nevada Veterinary Medical Association believes that the Board of Agriculture should include a large animal veterinarian by statute. The invaluable insight of a veterinarian, we believe, is frequently needed in many decisions made at the board level, and we feel in the interest of consumer protection, such a position should be included prospectively. We are working with the department and will continue to do so to find a resolution to this matter. We thank you for the committee's time today. As a reminder, we are currently on opposition testimony on Senate Bill 54. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in opposition at this time. Great, thank you so much. And last but not least, is there anyone wishing to testify in neutral of the bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Senate Bill 54, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, are there any last questions uh, from the committee members or before we move on? Um, I'd also like um, for Jennifer Hey, Chair, your, your uh, speaker's muffled for some reason. I didn't hear what you just said. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, if there are any uh, questions, last minute questions from any of my committee members at this time before proceeding. Seeing none, uh, Director, uh, Ms. Jennifer Ott, do you have any other last minute remarks that you would like to include? Uh, yes, Chairman, I'll be brief. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Jennifer Ott, for the record. Uh, I just wanted to um, briefly respond to some of the points that were made on record. Um, I, I, I'll i be honest, I, I was a little surprised by the Farm Bureau uh, amendment. Um, to give an explanation quickly, yes, there are uh, some uh, laws that are under director authority and some laws that are under board authority, and that is just a function of the legislative work that has happened over the years. Uh, when there is a regulation under board, board authority, it does go before the board, but I do want to emphasize that the process outside of that is exactly the same. We hold our small business impact statements. We hold workshops, sometimes several workshops, depending on the subject matter and the interest to the industry. And we have a hearing and then the regulation goes before the legislative commission. And so I, I guess I realize why I am surprised is that uh, that amendment would increase uh, the timeline on those activities and uh, it would really add an extra step when the authorities that the legislature has given over the years uh, is, is, um, not, doesn't exist. Uh, to uh, respond to the uh, semi-range and range language of the bill, um, yes, uh, we did remove the, the language of semi-range and range uh, and to make it livestock production. And that was specifically to, to be inclusive and not exclusive. So currently uh, only members that are grazing on uh, public lands uh, are, or portions of public lands are eligible to be on the board if you are a chicken producer. If you are a cattle producer, but only uh, graze on your own private pasture land, you're not eligible to be on the board. And so that language was meant to be uh, inclusive. And uh, with that, Chairman, thank you very much for allowing me to make closing comments. I appreciate the time uh, with the board or with the committee today. 
thank you so much, Ms. Hot, for your presentation, and we appreciate your time. Okay, uh, I, at this time, I will now go ahead and close the hearing on SB 54. Um, again, we will not be taking any action on these bills today. We may bring them back for a future work session for you. Um, so that's just for broad feedback. Uh, we are almost done with this meeting. So next, we will go ahead and proceed with the introduction of committee BDRs. Uh, committee members, as you know, pursuant to Joint Standing Rule 14, a majority of the members of the committee must vote to introduce legislation on behalf of the committee. As noted in our Committee Rule 6, committee introductions may be for accommodation only and is not to be construed as an approval of a measure. Joint Standing Rule 14 requires that certain measures be introduced by a standing committee, and among those measures are those requested by a statutory committees and interim, interim legislative studies. Today, we have three BDRs that were requested by the Legislative Committee on Public Lands. I will tell you briefly what each of those BDR relates to then, and I would like to take them all together in one motion. The first BDR that we have is BDR 48462, which it pro provides provision relating to groundwater boards. Uh, the second BDR is BDR R465, which urges Congress to provide funding to reduce the wild horse and borough populations to appropriate management levels. And then the third BDR that we will be introducing is BDR R469, which urges Congress to grant additional school trust lands to Nevada. With that, with that at this time, I will take a motion to approve the drafting of all three BDRs. So moved, Senator Greg Cachia. Uh, thank you, Senator Gorkachia. So, motion to approve by Senator Gorkachia. And thank do you, I have a second? Hansen. Thank you. And so, seconded by Senator Hansen. Um, is there any discussion on this motion? Any questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, will the committee secretary please go ahead and take the roll call vote? Senator. And just to be clear, uh, please answer yes or no for, for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goikachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? And let the record reflect that I am a yes. And with that, uh, the motion passes. Great. Thank you so much. At this time, uh, we can go ahead and proceed with public comment. So I will now call for public comment. Please remember to limit your comments to two minutes. Uh, BPS staff, is there anyone at this time wishing to provide public comment? Thank you, Chair. We are currently on public comment. Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, the public line is open and working and there are no public comment callers at this time. Great, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so thank you all for all our presenters that joined us today and for our committee members for your thought provoking questions. Um, members, are there any last minute comments or questions before we adjourn? Okay. Seeing none, uh, our next meeting is Thursday, February 25th at 3.30 p.m. And we will be hearing two bills, Senate Bills 63 and 98. And we will be receiving a, a brief presentation from the Carson Water Subconservancy Conservancy District. Um, so I now declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>